we met Craig three years ago when he wrote his first book called uh, Pancakes in Paris. Oh, yeah. And now he's written Let Them Eat Pancakes. So three years later, a lot has happened. You opened up a second one, you got yeah. married, and yes. oh my gosh, I want to live in France. The worker there, how can they complain? My God, you cannot right? hire them, you can't do anything to yes. them. I mean, when I read about what, what the, you, an employer, has, I feel sorry for the employer, not the employee. Yeah, no, no, the employee has a pretty, pretty good. Right now, uh, most are on vacation. You know, everybody in France, no matter where you work, you can work at McDonald's, you can work anywhere, you get five weeks paid vacation. Um, and so uh, the, even with the confinement, even with the, the virus, um, people go on with vacation as planned. And so Paris right now is pretty empty. Uh, as you know, every August, the, the, the Paris just clears out. And all the Parisians go to the coast, they go down to the Riviera, or they go to the mountains or their country home. And it's, it's really, really, Paris is quiet. But our restaurant's been really, really busy. Um, the diner, we did brunch today. It was packed. We had a line for a couple hours. And uh, mostly French people that did stay behind, and a lot of tourists from Europe. We've mm. had people from from everywhere, from Spain, Italy, Germany, Sweden. Uh, I, you know, they because now the borders are free through Europe, so that everyone's been traveling, and so uh, yeah, oh. it's great. What part of Paris is your restaurant? In? So the first one right here, can I show you real quick? Yeah. Is um, this yeah. is the very first one? It opened in two thousand three. And you can see the, you can see the stools and the, the, the you know the diner, all the diner decor. Um, I have a toasters at every table. That's what you see there is the toasters. Wow. And um, this is in the Latin Quarter, so very close to the Sorbonne. So we get lots of university students, um, a lot of French students, a lot of international students. Do you know Paris pretty well? I know where that area is. Sorbonne. Yeah. Yeah, and the second one is in the Marais, which is um, on the other side. This, so this is the oh, Rive Gauche, nice. the left bank. Right. We're on the left that's bank Victor right now. Hugo, Victor, Victor Hugo's museum is there, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Someone who knows, you know Paris very well. Yeah, this is, uh, that's in the Marais. It's uh, on the, in, the, in the right bank, in the fourth arrondissement. And it's right near the Place de Vosges, where the Victor Hugo mm -hmm. Museum is. Yeah. Fantastic place. Yeah, so fantastic. you couldn't ask for better locations. Lots of antique stores and great cafes. And yes. Yeah, I was yes. there, I went to Victor Hugo's house, and I, there was a cafe I used to go to call Victor uh, Hugo Cafe. So uh -huh. Somewhere a couple of years ago. Few yeah, it's a very, very beautiful 16th century um, uh, uh, square. Mm -hmm. Perfectly symmetrical, just, just beautiful. Beautiful. It takes yeah. you right back to the past. You can imagine the horse and buggies. You can imagine people dressed, you know, like the... Uh... Ian, you are coming to Paris to come to your restaurant. <laughs> oh, I hope so. You have to come as soon as you can, you know, once you're able to travel, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to talk about the book. I, I, sure. I got to give them the book. They haven't read it yet. But my gosh, the characters. I mean, yeah. the people you I had to deal with, the pigeon man. And oh. <laughs> uh, and news. I'm trying it's not. I mean, all these. Ca I mean, that you yeah. make them come so alive and interesting. And I, like, and, and and you know, you're like again, you're rooting for for the people and not for yeah. this pigeon guy. It's like you know, you want him. Especially yeah, you want to scream, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what 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 parts did you like? You like the pigeon man? What else? What else did you enjoy? The uh... Oh, I like all of it. And also, I had no idea about your childhood. You had a Dickensian ah. childhood. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Could you remind me about Mrs. O? Because she makes an important reappearance, but I don't remember her from the beginning because I got so caught up with all the other characters. Yes, so, yes, yes. So explain yeah, the story. Yeah, the, the story is framed by a, a wonderful moment where um, I'm sitting here in the diner and, and all the different things are happening. I don't know if you remember, like, uh, one thing after another with the customers, with the staff, and... But yeah, you have to put on a show. That's what, you know, that's why I love this high drama, right? That's what it's like being here with a diner. You, you, you have to let the people know what's going on behind the curtain. You have to make everything, you know, work. And, that, and, the, and the cast, the, the staff, the music, everything has to be uh, presented in a way that no one has to worry. And yet I'm, things are slowly kind of falling a, a little bit apart. And the in walks Mrs. O. And she is an 85-year-old teacher I had when I was, I mean, she's 85 now, but she's my high school teacher. And she comes and I had no idea she was coming into Paris. I hadn't seen her in 35 years. And she's holding a clipping from the, from the town newspaper about my book, my first book, Pancakes in Paris, and how I'll be doing a big presentation there in a couple of months. 
And she and so she's like, oh, Craigie, I'm looking for Craigie. And I'm like, Mrs. O, what are you doing in Paris? And uh, and she says, oh my God, you've become such a you know a celebrity back in hometown. Everybody can't wait till you come back. And and uh, and I, that kind of was oh, kind of puts me into a, a little bit of state because as you know, I didn't have the best childhood growing up there. And here I'm going back to sort of face my past. And this gets the book rolling about how has France changed me? What has living here done uh, to my life and how it brought so much to my life? When I go back there, well, you know, what, what's that going to be like? You know, how will I have changed? Will I have changed? And uh, what will it be like to sort of see my, confront the past again? You know, I've been away for so long. And so then it goes into just all the adventures I've had in Paris, how they've shaped me, how they uh, enrich my life, how they challenge my life, like you said, with the, uh, that, the labor laws and the staff, and how you can't fire people, and, and the bureaucracy in France, how it's so hard to run a business, and all this, just to stay afloat between the strikes and then the, uh, the protests, and now, of course, this, which happened uh, after the book came out, but it's just nonstop adventure. <laughs> and the yeah, I'm really looking forward to this new book because I loved your first one so much. Oh, you did? Um, yeah, and I must say, it looks like Paris has really done wonders for you. You look so much younger and more relaxed. Yeah. And even then, you know, like um, three years ago, you seemed quite um, enthusiastic about what was happening, but a little bit I felt like uncertain about the yes. future. Well, now yes. I think we feel much more secure. Yes, and that's. I want to thank you for combining two of the most wonderful things in the world: pancakes and Paris. And yeah, when you have those two things, what Paris else do you need? Who could ask for anything more? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Definitely. And uh, no, I'm glad you pointed that out because you're right. Back when that, uh, you know, I had in the first book, I uh, things gotten the pressure had gotten so mm -hmm. bad that I had that moment where I had the health scare where I collapsed when I was jogging. Mm -hmm. So it had been a rough period, and since then, you know. Thankfully, through the help of my husband, Julian, which when you read the book, you'll see he has a very much bigger part in this because you really see how he's come in and he's helped support me and he helped me get through the rough times. As a Frenchman, he can navigate the French system much easier than me. He's not intimidated. He's not scared by the whole bureaucracy. You know, when they come with these threatening letters and things, he's just, oh, well, c'est pas grave, no biggie. You know, we'll get through this, you know. And so I think that, that the love story part of the book is very strong. And I think... Uh, just how the enrichment of, of my life from this experience and having these diners, the, the people I've met through them, the relationships I've had, especially Julian's mom. You, did you like, uh, Eva, did you like um, Julian's mom? Who, oh, who, uh, are you kidding? Oh my God, that whole thing about, oh, you guys, the way you make escargot was just... <laughs> Yes, what she told me because she she uh, he, she's an amazing cook. She spoils oh. me with her her, her cooking, I'm and so she uh, yeah. Heart. And little did I know that she also was a, a snail hunter. There's a hunting season in France for snails, and I never knew this until you know my, my mother-in-law. And one day we're out there in the woods, and next thing you know, she's gathering 240 snails. And as you said, how she, how they prepare them here? Oh my gosh, a, a six-step process that makes you go, Ooh, you know. And but you'll excitement. you'll never look at escargot the same way again. Sorry. And the excitement of smuggling them in. Oh, and then that was the big thing. We tried, we had to smuggle them into America because she did, she insisted. Um, so I had to introduce her to my friends. I said I have the best mother in the world. I have to introduce them to her. And so we went back to the United States, and she cooked a meal for 15 people, and included uh, escargot, which we smuggled in past customs. Uh, 240 snails, six jars. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it, it was quite an adventure. It's called Operation Escargo. That's what we called it. You know, we're gonna get it through. And, uh, you know. What are the names of your restaurants? So they're both called Breakfast in America, um, Breakfast in America One and Breakfast in America Two. And um, and there's a whole fun story if any of you know Super Tramp and the and the album and the song Breakfast in America. It has uh, no relation in there, but there's a wonderful chapter for music lovers about the name of the book and uh, I was always afraid that it might be a problem because hmm. Supertramp has a great album called that. But yeah. in the end, there's a happy ending and you have to read it because it's a wonderful story oh, about Supertramp. So it's funny because when you mentioned Supertramp and the music, I'm like, I, like oh, I must know this person, this band. Yes. I played it on YouTube and I'm like, 
oh my god that's the because i know the i know songs i don't know the yes title, i don't know the group but the logical song i love that song that is yes. like my favorite song exactly same with me i, I never like uh, you know consciously never made the the name based on super Tramp. but then when i started listening to the songs i was like oh my god i grew up with this i grew up with all these songs and your book is also so relatable it's like you're reading it and all of a sudden like Oh my God, he's just like me. When you came to the Cat Stevens, the fact that your wedding song was from the Harold and Maude, you know, uh -huh. you have to sing out, sing out. I mean, you I know it. Oh, I'm so glad you know that song. Are you kidding? I saw Cat Stevens in Madison Square Garden, March 5th, 1975. I mean. Oh, I that's a height of him, isn't it? When he was at his best. Wow. Yeah. So I would have loved to see that. Book, you just want to go, you want to go to your restaurant and you want to, you know, um, and you want you want to you know hang out with you. This, this oh, how nice! It's, it's so relatable. Well, oh. so, somebody, yeah, somebody said that right now. Now that we, you know, it's difficult to travel. They said it's a perfect armchair travel book because you just transport you to Paris, and, and you suddenly feel like you're there. I, I put in a little map. You might remember the little map of Paris with all the different landmarks, and that you can probably show them that where. Um, where those who love Paris are like, oh, I know the Luxembourg Gardens, I know this. It's like all the different areas of Paris that, that are part of the story. And I think that was a, a part of the book. I wanted you, anyone who loved Paris, or if you wanted to go to Paris, um, yeah, there you go. It's this wonderful drawing by a Japanese illustrator. And she drew this, this beautiful map of Paris with all the different adventures and different things from the story, so. And you have photographs too. Oh, by the way, just so you know, Scott Siegel has joined us too. Scott Siegel put oh, on Scott. wonderful concerts. We're talking to Paris right now. This is Craig Carlson. He has two restaurants in Paris called Breakfast in America. Yep. Well, I'm hungry. I'm <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> yeah, we should. You can order some pancakes here right now. Blueberry is uh, <laughs> on the menu. Yeah. So. so yeah. Um. Anything you want to let us know, Craig, before, you know? Oh, sure, sure. So, so um, well, this is just wonderful to be promoting the book. I think if you want to get the book, um, you can get it on, uh, of course, Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. But I really, um, I have an event coming up in New York that we're going to be doing a Zoom on Shakespeare and, Com Shakespeare and Company. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, it's uh, September. Sorry, did I say June? September 9th. It's coming up, uh, Zoom. And... Uh, um, so I always like to give a shout out. My, you, know, you had a shout out to my teacher earlier, Mrs. O. I'd love to do a shout out to the independent bookstores because they are struggling right now and they really need our support. So if you can go to your local bookstore, uh, order the book, they might have it in stock. Most independent bookstores do. And you can also join me on my uh, website, which is craigcarlsonauthor.com or Facebook Craig, at craigcarlsonauthor.com. So when you can keep up with events coming up and uh, and one little little tidbit, we're in the process of um, doing a deal with a producer to possibly make turn this into a TV series. So keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll uh, have Pancakes in Paris, the TV show. Um, could be a lot of fun, you know, just uh, beautiful food, beautiful location, wonderful characters, like you said. Yeah. You can't go wrong with food and location. <laughs> right, exactly, and yeah. characters. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, it would be a great TV series because, you know, I mean, following, you know, this guy bugged you and bugged you to get be a waiter and then what he does to you and then uh, all my, and, and then yes. uh, Ola Tour d'Argent, you know, I know. Oh my gosh, the whole venture I, with that, one of the best I restaurants in the there. world. Yeah, You've been to the Tour d'Argent? Yes! Oh. When I was an au pair girl in Paris, my, my, my family came to visit, we went to La Tour d'Argent, and I remember that the man gets the menu with the prices and nobody else. Yes, yes. And what I've done is I brought my uh, head cook. She was she was had, she was moving back to America, and she had been so wonderful. I invited her to the restaurant, but I didn't know if I could afford it, the budget. And of course, they gave me the menu with the prices, and her not. <laughs> and so I was like, "Ooh, I hope she doesn't order the truffle soup. Otherwise, I'm I'm ruined." <laughs> so. Well, anyway, oh, it's coming. I'm so happy to have you from Paris. It's unbelievable. I love Paris. It's oh, good to just... have you on High Drama. Yes, thank you. And right now, it's it's a wonderful time in Paris. There, there's no lines. You can go to all the museums. The all the all the sites are open. The Eiffel Tower, everything's open. But you don't want us with the American passport. They don't let us in. Yes, but I can tell you honestly, from all my French customers and the French cafes here, that they miss Americans. They want us back. They keep uh -huh. saying that. We hope that this clears soon because we miss our our Americans. You know, because it's such a part of Paris, especially from April until about you know September. You can just hear people in the street, you, you know, just, we, we need that. We need, we need Americans back. 
And, and I'm glad know, COVID yeah. hasn't affected your business, that you're you're doing well. Yeah, I feel very fortunate, yes, because, uh, yeah, and the city's done a lot to help us. The city and Francis done a lot to help us uh, keep going, so good support. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for coming from Paris, and I'm so glad the story keeps having a happily ever after, or now it's a happily to be continued. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yes, exactly. It's great meeting you. I'm great coming meeting to you Paris too. And I'm gonna look for you and for Please. your pancake in Paris, huh? Yeah, come find yeah. me. I have a booth waiting for you right here. Okay. Right we here are in the diner. There you I come people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Let me pancakes. Yay! Let them eat pancakes. That's what Maria Antoinette really said. People don't know that, but that's what the real <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> okay, Scott. So so Scott Siegel, you've been putting on these amazing uh, concerts and you've been paying everybody and you still got your Broadway by the year, but your Broadway by the year has a new twist to it. You have, you just focus on a few of the um, performances and then we get to talk to the people afterwards. So that's cool. It's a nice change. Um, well, I, it's an unfortunate need for the change, but it's a nice way to have, uh, to be able to deal with, uh, with the circumstance in order to uh, uh, show these performances. You know, I, I, I didn't remember, uh, but uh, it's now three and a half years ago, uh, Town Hall got a grant in order to uh, uh, film the performances uh, for archival purposes. So uh, they had three or four cameras set up. Uh, and uh, so when the virus came and uh, we were sort of forced to shut down, uh, it was wonderful that we had this, this uh, ability to go back and look at these performances and then as a new twist, well there are two new twists to the to the Broadway by the Year home edition. One of the twists is uh, uh, being able to show these clips from the past uh, and the other was that, uh, uh, well the, the twist was, the, the real twist was that uh, having the people who perform come back live and talk about those performances and, and talk about uh, their careers and, and what Broadway by the Year and Town Hall meant uh, to them in, in that particular context, uh, and so it was. It was. It, it gives a whole new uh, layer of uh, of experience to to seeing those people in performance because then you get to to, uh, to hear them talk about it. Uh, and the other thing we were able to do is you know my general monologues uh, that introduced both each concert as well as uh, the performers we're allowed to illustrate now uh, uh, as if there was a movie screen at Town Hall. Uh, and, uh, and like if I'm talking about Gatorade was invented in 1965, you can see what a bottle of Gatorade looked like in 1965. It looked like Valvoline actually. But uh, uh, it was a real opportunity to sort of uh, use the medium, this medium, uh, uh, to help explicate what we were doing on the stage of Town Hall. So it made, uh, and they're shorter too, it's about 45 minutes to an hour each, each concert. Uh, and we and you get to see things that you uh, didn't generally get to see when we did Broadway by the Year, so that's kind of exciting, and it, and it keeps the Broadway by the Year audience engaged, and it does one other thing: it allows people who couldn't get to Broadway by the Year, uh, who couldn't see these shows at Town Hall, see them not only in other parts of the country but all over the world. So so we're making Broadway by the Year a little more accessible to uh, to a larger and more uh, diverse audience, really. And then your American Songbook, you're on your seventh concert already. Uh -huh. How do you choose people and the songs? And Oh, I, I always get a kick when Danny Gardner's on because, I mean, he taps in the hallway. He still does this amazing <laughs> tapping. Well, and it's great. Course, I mean, the, the lovely thing about this, uh, it's, it's really a win-win-win uh, circumstance for this uh, Great American Songbook concert series. For those who don't know what we're talking about, um, there's... Uh, what I did was I, I started a GoFundMe campaign uh, mm -hmm. because I couldn't stand the fact that I was seeing all over my Facebook page and everywhere else, everybody, all these performers that I know were, 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 uh, were giving away their, their art as it were. Um, it's like a, like a, like a sale. <laughs> you know? I'm doing this for free. And it was driving me crazy because whenever there was a, whenever there was been a crisis of any kind, it was always the theater people who come out first to do a benefit for them. Uh, and if anybody needed a benefit now, it is the theater people. And yet still they're, they're, they're singing on their porches and they're singing in the, uh, from their windows and they're, and they're singing on, on screens uh, uh, 
telephone screens in order to to be heard and to share their art and they're and they're broke you know and so i decided to set up a gofundme campaign and see if i could get basic people who love people who love this art form uh uh who still had their jobs or had had money in the bank whatever they could afford to to donate to uh uh, uh provide a fund so that i could pay people to perform and i created this series uh and invited I, I know a lot of performers from having done Broadway over the year for 20 years and have been a critic for for 30 years and uh uh so I invited people to start singing and I would, and I'm paying them to perform. And uh, uh, so they get, they get paid, they get a chance to, to share their art and we try to pick songs, not always, but, but a certain number of songs within each concert to resonate with, with our times. Um, and uh, it's been an exciting experience really to have, oh, you want to, to have people, uh, uh, respond the way they have. We've had over 175 people donate uh, in, in, in amounts small and large. And uh, and now we have a matching fund, a very generous donor gave us a matching fund and said, you can get up to $25,000. Uh, I'll match anything that you get up to $25,000. And uh, and we're almost halfway uh, to that amount, uh, which is allowing us to, to continue to do this into the fall. And hopefully if we get the full matching fund, uh, you know, through the holiday season, so performers can perform, you know, and be paid for performing. Right. And we had an extraordinary number of stars. Our eighth concert coming up on Thursday, um, August thirteenth, uh, uh, I think it is. Yeah, thirteenth will be um, uh, Jen Colella is doing it. Uh, Tony Award winner from Come From Away. She was the the airline uh, pilot, female airline airline pilot. She's doing her song from that that got her the Tony Award. Uh, uh, Tom Wopat, two-time Tony nominee, uh, is in it. Uh, uh, so it's people like that. We've had people like Elizabeth Stanley and Anais Reno, who's a, who's a jazz phenom. She's, she's 16 and has played Carnegie Hall already. Um, so it's people like that that uh, are performing for it. And it's, and it's been very exciting, very rewarding for me. Uh, we're all learning this new medium, uh, as, as all of you who are watching now and, and are part of uh, this panel. Uh, we're all learning. We didn't do this kind of stuff before. And uh, so we're all learning how to do it. And each time we do it, we get a little better at it. Yeah, I want to say I'm, I'm really happy that you're calling the people who donate producers, because I think it really emphasizes just how important it is that people really help out and makes them feel kind of more like, wow, we can contribute. They're, they're, making, they're making a difference. Uh, and... Uh, and I really mean it doesn't make any difference how much people donate. Uh, we have donors for $10 to you know, over $1,000. But uh, the important part is that they're participating and they're part of, they're part of it. And the lovely thing, the, 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 the extra win is that once it's produced, once we have these concerts in the can and ready to go, they're, they're not exclusive to the 175 producers who or audience members who gave money. They're giving money so that the whole world can see these concerts. Uh, they're the they're free to they're free to everybody once once they're out there we put them out i put them out as as widely as i can and then i hope people will share them um but i put it on facebook on, on twitter on instagram uh I, I email links to 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 literally thousands of people and YouTube. And, YouTube. And you, yes on youtube well that's the base it lives on youtube uh but yeah i i don't know how many people actually go to youtube to see it because it goes out it goes out to everybody uh, but we're averaging about 1,500 views per show. Uh, uh, it's somewhere around 12,000 people have, have, have viewed these concerts and, uh, and still growing. Um, I have a network of uh, uh, throughout North America through a, through a co-producer uh, who joined me in this, uh, largely because he had this network of people, 95,000 people that it could potentially go to across North America uh, once they find it. Uh, um, and uh, so it, it's it's there to be seen and enjoyed because what we want, in addition to paying the performers, is for the performers to have an audience and be able to be seen. Uh, that that's why they do it. They don't do it to 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 sing in their bedrooms. They do it to be seen uh, uh, by as many thousands of people as possible. When we do this this any of these concerts, they're being seen by as many people who would see them at town hall. Um, and we'd like to expand that even further. Have you heard from any of them, like how it's helped them jumpstart their career 
after what's going on right now, like like Brian Charles Rooney, I happen to love Giant mm-hmm. Brian Charles yes, Rooney. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, it, I'm, it's not jump starting anybody's career, but it, what it's allowing them is to feel connected to their careers because so many people feel that their 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 career. Uh, I, my Facebook, I have a lot right, of Facebook people, and and they and they they are. Um, they're sort of desperate. They don't know where, you know, when this all started, we thought, oh, it'd be a few months, maybe, you know, people would get back to things maybe by the end of the spring or the summer. Uh, and because of the ridiculous leadership we have in Washington, the, uh, the, this has been extended and extended and, and could have, we could have been back by the summer, but unfortunately it won't be till next spring. So people are, 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 people are leaving New York. People are, are looking for other ways to, to, uh, um, uh, make money, you know. Uh, I, I, if they can't make it in the theater, they have to do other things. So they're they're leaving their profession. Some of them uh, leaving New York. Some of them. Uh, but what this show is providing for them is a little bit of an anchor, a little bit of an oasis to say, wait a minute, what I do counts. What what I do means something and matters. Um, and uh, uh, and that's what that's what they're hearing from the audience at large. The responses that they're getting uh, from what they're doing is. This, this, this is keeping me alive as an audience member, as people. The other, you know, the, the audience is hungry for this material too. Uh, and what they often get in Facebook is this, a performance, you know, one song here, one song there. Here, this is a 45 to an hour concert. Uh, there are usually at least 10 performances in each concert. And, and we only have one, perform, one, one performer you know, we don't multiply, uh, like if Brian Charles Rooney's in a show, he does one song. If Christina Bianco's in this, she does one song. If Aaron Lazar is in it, he does one song. Uh, so, so you're getting, a, you know, like I always say, you know, if you don't like the weather in the Midwest, wait five minutes, it'll change. <laughs> it's the same thing here. You know, if you don't like what you're seeing, wait a minute, there's another, another performer, another style, another, 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 uh, another genre of great American music to be heard. So uh, it's, it's always fresh and always new and uh, always surprising like Danny Gardner dancing you know uh it's uh, it's always a revelation well anyway no we're, we're, we're running out of time I'm sorry to say I mean time flies when you're having fun and talking to wonderful people like you and Craig so anyway like I said everyone can see it on, on YouTube just go to Scott Siegel American Songbook and you'll find all of it there and uh we'll let you know it more anyway Keep up the good work. You're making me very happy. It's like we you can eat your pancakes and listen to these wonderful concerts. <laughs> Thanks, Ava. I appreciate it. This is yeah, so it's been a delightful show. It's so nice to have been in Paris and in New York with Craig Carlson and his wonderful book, Let Them Eat Pancakes, and with Scott Siegel and his wonderful concert series of Broadway by the Year. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>